Right. So this is going to be part of my weekly posting schedule, which is just me going over the NAL's matches and my thoughts about the teams or performances and all of that good stuff. So kicking it off right off the bat, uh, play day one, I was pleasantly surprised with the first match of Beast Coast versus Parabellum. I think Beast Coast showed a lot of good stuff and a lot of potential, but also very clearly they are a new team and they are not polished yet. And I, I actually really liked what they were doing with the Tachanka with Anthony on the Tachanka. They had some really interesting lineups and the way he, they were using him actually showed that there is innovation to be had on the map. Uh, just thanks to operator reworks and new operators rather than necessarily having to rework a very well played out map with rather minimal changes made to it. SQ versus Astralis, I'm going to be honest, I watched like the first half of it and just shut it off. It was uh, it, it was a thrashing. Uh, I'm concerned for the Sonics after the first two play days. Uh, I, I really don't know what to say outside of you expect a, a top four finish from the Sonics at SI to kind of tra carry over, transfer over to uh, NAL against Astralis and Parabellum. Uh, especially Astralis, because they looked so bad last stage, but they made two roster changes, a coach and a uh, and a single player, and they actually look really good. Well, kind of good. Better than I was expecting, I'm going to be honest. My expectations for Astralis, knowing that they're only making a coaching change and a one singular roster change, I was expecting them to be last place. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be honest. I did not have high hopes for this team because I just didn't think that they could find a player to replace all the intangibles that they lost by just trying to go for straight firepower. And they've proved me wrong to a certain extent. Uh, with That 7-1 versus the Sonics, on one hand, is impressive. On the other hand, when Iconic pops off, Iconic pops off. We don't know how consistent you're going to get that in this team. So how much stock do you put on that? If that's your win condition, I'm, that's a shit win condition. I'm sorry. Uh, so, and versus OXG, you know, Iconic didn't pop off and Astralis lost. So, by that logic, they're going to have a rough time of it. Dark Zero, they look really strong. I think they battered Mirage on Bank, frankly. And then they had a close one versus Beast Coast. But honestly, I think that speaks more to Beast Coast's potential and just kind of tenacity and unfamiliarity than anything wrong with Dark Zero at this point in time. I am a little concerned about Hyper's performance in the past half year, I suppose. Like, I never really saw him go nuclear in the Six Invitational, and I haven't seen a pop-off... I feel like I haven't seen a pop-off game from him in a long time. And I understand that he's moved on to more supportive roles to make room for Pamba and NJR, but it's still concerning. Like... Hyper really was a superstar level talent at one point in time. So to have him be kind of honestly one of the weak points of a team right there with Canadian when it comes to fragging power, that's a little surprising and a little concerning, especially because Canadian's been turning around his personal form. So if Hyper's your weakest link, and he, that's not because he's just the worst player on the team, but it's because he's not winning his gunfights, that's genuinely concerning. So... Dark Zero, they look in shape to be a top four finish, but I'm concerned about Hyper. He's I, he's on the watch list. <laughs> um, but talking about their opposition for play day one, Mirage. Man, I was so in excited about Gera's uh, Gera Guerra. I I don't know how to say his his handle, but I was I was excited about uh, Gera's uh, you know. Transition from assistant coach at Dark Zero to head coach at Mirage and like to see his coaching philosophy. I know it's early days for this Mirage team, but in general, I gotta say I'm a little disappointed. Like last year wasn't looking too impressive, and just judging off the first two matches, it's more of the same. I feel like I don't know what this Mirage team is doing, uh, or what they are even good at. They lose a lot of teams very quickly, like very, very, very aggressively going on, going for info. But I just feel like I never see anything done with that info. Or if it is, it's in an uncoordinated fashion that just doesn't work. 
then again, that was only on bank for both matches, so maybe they have a deeper map pool and just bank is kind of a weak map for them, and they caught a Dark Zero and an SSG who both very clearly enjoy the map. So maybe that's for the case. I don't know, but I I have... Mirage's stock is low in my mind right now. OXG? I think OXG looks really good. I was a little surprised because I was expecting them to have some stumbles uh, coming into this stage because they had to replace Yaga and Kino. But, you know, I I knew Dream was a... Dream was a known quantity as far as quality goes. We, uh, he's always been a good player just on bad teams. So when you give a good clutch anchor, hard support, a team of actual consistent performers in other positions, he's going to thrive. And then Neuer's, uh, he really shocked me versus TSM. He went absolutely bonkers versus the Six Invitational World Champions. And then he showed to be, have a level of consistency versus Astralis as well. So he's kind of erased all doubts in my mind about his level of performance uh, relatively quickly. I still want to see him in another play day or two just to make sure like we're getting a consistent level of performance. But if he can keep this up, he is honestly an impressive pickup by OXG, especially because like that's some that's just some really good scouting. OXG didn't pick up newers from a another pro team they picked him up from challenger league or below i don't even think he was in challenger league that takes really good scouting and that's something to be lauded uh on the part of the oxg team and the coaches and whatnot tsm i think tsm looked a little rocky uh i think the match versus oxg was rough uh theme park was definitely a struggle especially because bolo had zero kills for like five six rounds that takes that he's a star player if he goes missing it's gonna affect your team so it, it makes sense but they kind of turned it around versus exa and shut down uh that team very quickly uh in play day two it was chalet honestly it was i think seven three is a generous scoreline for exa frankly i think that was that doesn't describe how dominant the match was in favor of tsm the last two teams are Space Station Game and the X set. I, I'll just get Space Station out of the way first. I think they look good. I'm excited about the leadership changes. Sky's being put in a more flexible role with Bosco being put on that hard support. I feel like he's been in that like flex soft support role for a while now. And, you know, he's Bosco. He's the clutch god. All that good jazz. But I feel like he's always had a skill set that would fit well into a hard support role so seeing that transition and kind of unlocking skies as a result i think is a really good thing my one concern is that uh, and this isn't even about the standard nal season but with space station i i have my eyes internationally i'm all in my head i assume these guys are going through to international events and with that like context i'm concerned about Houghton. Hot and Cold was missing from SI 2022. He was nowhere to be found in the server, and it's majorly concerning because I know he's going to eat up in the end. But I don't care about that. You already have one hammer on SSG. You want two, and if Hotten can't show up internationally, I it's very concerning, and I'm just kind of curious to see what happens with him in this team kind of in this stage, like, will he bounce back and become even better? Or will he kind of fall back down from the absolute crazy high he had last year? Uh, it's something I'm very curious to watch because it is a major narrative for this team, uh, I think, of, like, the superstardom of hot and cold uh, in the region, but a failure to perform internationally, and how are we going to reconcile those two uh, facts? And last but maybe least probably tied with mirage astralis um x set i'm gonna be honest i was very excited about this team because they had you know the three brazilian players the brazilian coaching staff they had yaga an american and spirits a canadian i thought x set was going to be an interesting team or at least at the very least exciting and i'll give them this they are exciting to watch but i don't think i can actually get excited about 
a very strategy or anything. On a strategic level, they just felt very individualistic and very dependent on winning their gunfights or being very, very aggressive constantly. And their, their solution when they got... Their answer when they would get stumped or pushed back by a team was to get more aggressive, more individualistic. And I, it just doesn't work. I, I think this two seven three score lines kind of prove that. Like a 7-3 versus SSG wasn't that good. A 7-3 versus uh, TSM on Chalet, it's, it's a struggle. Like these are definitely maps that are harder to prepare for and you have to have well-made strats for them but at the same time bank is a returning map like it didn't have that many changes made to it before it returned into the pro map pool and there's plenty of tape to create defaults and you know run a few dry runs on and chalet has been around for long enough that i expect a little more out of this the only excuse or kind of concession i can give xset is that they are a very new team i don't think any of these players have played together outside of kino and yaga so there's not a lot of cohesion or team synergy or any of that going on in this team it has to be built up during this during this stage so of course they're going to look rough in the early days but uh if i'm being honest if they maintain this style i really can't see them doing much better so yeah Looking at, looking at uh, the next play day, TSM versus Mirage, uh, I think this is going to be a stomp in favor of TSM, frankly. I want Mirage to do good because I want my boy Thomas to, to thrive. I want Marmalade to do good because I think it's about time that narrative about like, oh, women can't play in esports is... It's, it's outdated, bro. But we need someone to actually put up results to prove it like and shut them up. Con shut up people who think like that concretely and i don't know if this mirage team is a team that's going to be able to let marmalade or whoever do that i hope it is we haven't seen that much good stuff out of them so far hopefully that changes and i really don't want to see mirage on bank again i tsm is just gonna have a field day space station versus astralis uh if we get 14 to no 100% cost iconic like we did on play day one, maybe Astralis can make it a seven f or, or a five seven. But I think SSG takes this just dominantly. I think it's a different tier tier of team. The Sonics are very clearly in a slump, uh, so that's a win. That's almost a free win for Astralis in a sense on play day one and in play day two. They weren't beat down super hard by OXG, but they were definitely beat by a handy margin. So I think SSG is in that same tier of play, that same level of quality as Oxygen is. So I don't expect Astralis to do anything more than a 7374 versus Space Station. Oxygen versus Beast Coast. I think this is going to be a 7475 with OXG taking it, but Beast Coast making it at least a fun watch. They've proven that they can keep maps close, and if they do get ahead, they have a bit of a choking problem and all that. But I think overall, they're going to be a relatively interesting team to watch. So this should definitely, in my eyes, this is the match of the day, frankly, because none of these other matches so far have caught my eye. And simply put, Beast Coast has been playing super interesting Siege with players that are very interesting to watch for a variety of narrative reasons. Trip has the obvious storyline. Slash Hug's return to Tier 1 play. He's an OG. Of course, I'm going to care about that. Uh, you know, is Anthony really a superstar from the original Beast Coast War? Uh, it's looking like it. You know, there's so many narratives with this team that I think are just very interesting, and they have a level of quality or a level of potential to kind of back it up and make me actually care to watch it live. So, match of the night for me, in my eyes. Sonics versus Xset. Normally, this would be a pretty easy uh, win in favor of Sonics, but given the form they've been in recently, I don't know. I think if Exit really turns the aggression up to 12, not not 11, but 12, they can probably win this unless uh, the Sonics wake up a little. And on the other side, I think the Sonics are going to try and take this to a more tactical map, like a theme park or a bank. Just so that they can shut down that X set aggression a little bit better. 
but I don't know if it's going to work. I need, I need, all right, God, who was it underperforming? I, I think it was Kansan or Grixer. I think it was Grixer. Yeah. I think we need Grixer to kind of wake up a little bit. He seems to be struggling a little, but if he wakes up, I think it's over for X set. Sonic's win this seven, five, six, eight, or eight, six, I suppose. And then last but not least, Dark Zero versus Parabellum. Probably a 7-3 in favor of Parabellum. Or, no, not in favor of Parabellum. Dark Zero over Parabellum. And my reasoning is that if Parabellum tries to go to a map like Bank, one of those, Bank or Villa, or one of those more strategic maps, I think Dark Zero just has the tactical edge there. They've been a team together for a lot longer than Parabellum has. Dark Zero made no roster changes. Parabellum made, what, two, three? And on top of that, Dark Zero uh, is just a top-level international team versus Parabellum, who's essentially this upstart from Challenger League. So it's going to be an uphill battle for Parabellum, but I'm hoping that they can put up a few rounds, three or four, I think is a good... putting in a good rapport for yourself, but you're obviously aiming to win the match, try and get it to a 7-5, try and force an overtime to at least guarantee that one point, but I don't know if that's going to happen for Parabellum. I just don't see it happening. I think it's a 7-4 in favor of Dark Zero. So, yeah, those are my thoughts about uh, Playdays 1 and 2 and my predictions about Playday 3. So, yeah.